So you've got your perfect landscape photography trip planned. And for weeks in advance, you've been preparing for the trip and getting the right gear, the right pack, the right lenses. But there is one little thing that can absolutely destroy your landscape photography trip, and it is called a bear. Do you give much thought to bear safety when you are on a landscape photography trip out in the mountains? Well, maybe it's time that you do. And I'll show you the steps that I take in order to avoid confrontations with bears and some other great little safety nuggets of information as well. So we just got off the chopper, geared up, put the packs on and away we go. We are hiking up to the viewpoint where we're going to get our first shot at sunset. This is a good time to talk about uh, the type of stuff I bring when I'm on these type of backpacking trips. The obvious one is to have a headlamp so that you can get back to camp uh, after sunset, but we are in bear country and I don't just mean like black bears. This is grizzly bear country and big grizzly bears. So you have to have bear spray with you and um, Leah and I both have our own cans of bear spray and like really accessible. You don't keep this in your pack. I actually have a little um, kind of a stretchy pocket on the side of my pants that this fits into perfectly so you can just get at it really fast. And the other thing that I have, this is called a bear banger. And what it is, is that there's a projectile on the front and I'll unscrew it. And this is kind of like a trigger. And you fire it like this. And there's a firing pin that hits the back here and it shoots a projectile about 50 meters. And then it goes bang. And theoretically that can scare away a bear that uh, is giving you serious grief but that's kind of a last resort thing and it's not something that you want to use unless you're in a, a somewhat life-threatening situation and by the way if you like videos about adventure photography then please consider subscribing to this youtube channel and clicking the little bell beside it when you are hiking in real bear country like we are it's not a bad idea to have a bear bell this one here is kind of cool because it has a little magnet built into this strap right here and if you put the magnet right at the bottom it holds the little ball so that it won't um, ring. So anyway, it's just a great idea to let uh, any potential grizzly bear mamas with cubs know that you're coming so that you don't have that surprise confrontation. I have been hiking in the backcountry for my entire adult life. I've never had a negative confrontation with a bear. I've seen lots and lots of bears and in every single case they have all run away. They are not looking for confrontations with humans but it's when you surprise them and especially a mother with cubs that that's when you can run into trouble. So something like this as maybe annoying as it can be when you're in grizzly country it's not a bad idea. The other thing that I like to have on my backpacking trips is a little uh, first aid bag just with a little bit of everything because you just never know when you're way f out there in the backcountry uh, you never know when you're going to need first aid so it's just better to be prepared. Another really handy thing to have on a backpack hiking trip is a lock blade knife that can be opened with one hand. So this one has this little nub right here and I can open it up and it's a lock blade super handy to have I mean obviously you're not going to use it for photography per se but when you're way out in the bush like we are right now it is a good thing to have and then that brings me of course to water so when you're hiking really long distances you need a lot of water with you but the downside of that is that water is just so heavy so the workaround is to carry a bottle that has built-in filtration so you can just grab water out of a stream or out of a lake this one that i'm using is made by life straw and um, it's got the filter that goes down inside of it like that and when you want to actually drink from it you pop this little thing up and then you suck the water out and it works really well and then that way you don't have to carry around like five pounds of water on your hike. So those are the basic essentials. Obviously the other thing is uh, rain gear. Like today it was sunny and then it was cloudy. So you got to have full rain gear, pants and jacket. Then be prepared for cold. I brought along my uh, like a wool cap, a toque. And even though it's nice and warm right now, it gets cold. These are the mountains and it's just so unpredictable. 
Another thing about these hiking types of landscape photography trips, weight is everything. So I look for gear that weighs the least amount, starting with my tripod. I make sure that the tripod that I use for landscape photography is a carbon fiber tripod and that the tripod head is as lightweight as possible. It's really important because every gram, every ounce really adds up when you've got it on your back in a backpack and you have a long, long way to hike. Another thing that I want in my tripod is a hook right beneath the tripod head and I want that for those really windy days. So on this particular day it was incredibly windy and I used the hook to hang my backpack so that it would weigh down the tripod and it would shake less in the wind. Now a little trick with this is that you want the bottom of your backpack to touch the ground so that the wind won't make it swing which would also cause movement on your tripod. Another thing that I look for with saving weight is to try not to bring lenses that have an f2.8 or a really wide type of aperture opening because this means there's going to be more glass in the lens and it weighs a lot more. And this was a big decision. I got rid of my f2.8 zoom lens it was a 70 to 200 millimeter zoom and because it was f2.8 it was just really really heavy so i sold that one and downgraded and got one that is an f4 zoom lens and it weighs about a pound less because it has less glass and that makes a big difference and speaking of lenses, another way that I save weight is with my wide angle lens. Now I have a Nikon 14 to 24 millimeter wide angle lens. I love that lens, but it weighs a ton. So if I'm going on a backpack landscape photography trip, I will leave that lens at home and bring along a 20 millimeter prime lens. It's f 1.8, so it's perfect for dark sky, Milky Way shots. And I think it saves probably about a pound of weight. The other thing I'm aware of when I'm on a hiking trip is the issue of batteries. Now, I do not use a mirrorless camera. I find that mirrorless cameras eat through batteries very quickly. One of the things that I really have to watch for when I'm on this type of a backpacking trip is to not use live view on this camera because it sucks the battery dry. And I got a lot of questions asking me, hey, is the Nikon D850 the way to go? Or what about the Z7 or the Z6? Well. Battery life. When you're on a hiking trip, you don't have anywhere to charge your batteries up and unless you want to be bringing along 10 batteries, then uh, this is where having the good old single lens reflex viewfinder, it's optical, analog, old school, no batteries to die quickly. And um, yeah, so that's why I'm using the viewfinder and not the back screen on this one. Adventure landscape photography is incredibly rewarding because you get to do two things at the same time. Number one, you are creating your own fine art. And number two, you are exploring and enjoying the great outdoors. Now, if you are not using an RV or camper van for at least some of your landscape photography adventure trips, then you are missing out. So if you want to see how I use my own four-wheel drive RV for adventure landscape photography, then click the icon over on the left-hand side. As always, I'll see you in my next video. Happy shooting!